what miracle were they looking for? They saw dangerous dimensions of God. But at the slightest opportunity, they bowed to bow. They committed adultery with Ashtaroth. If the man is a believer and the wife is not, he too can sanctify the wife. She can become a partaker in what she should not, not normally enjoy because someone is creating the favorable atmosphere for God to invade. Do we understand it? Next verse. But if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. What does Paul mean when he says she's not under bondage? She doesn't need to force the marriage to continue. She doesn't. But does that mean that she can go and remarry? No. Go to verse 30. Is it 30 I'm looking for? Thirty-nine. A wife is bound by law as long as her what? Her husband lives. This is how he concluded this matter. A wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives. But if her husband dies, she is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes only where in the Lord. So it must be a believer. Go to verse 40. But she is happier if she remains as she is according to who? My own judgment. He is now saying, well, but for me, oh, according to the Lord, she's bound, oh. If the man is still living, she's bound. She cannot remarry. But for me, oh, I will not even be thinking about remarrying because I'll be happier. And I think I also have what? So this was why I said during the singles meeting that even if the unbeliever leaves, the Christian cannot go and remarry as long as that unbeliever is still alive. That's scripture. Do we agree to that point? So this is clearly the position of the Bible as relates to the matters of divorce. So I will leave you to answer the question yourself. Is divorce a sin? If divorcing means that you become an adulterer and you go and remarry, you are in adultery. And adultery is a sin. May the Lord give you understanding. Because the Bible is very clear that outside the gate, Part of the people you will find outside the New Jerusalem are adulterers. People that will suffer the second death are adulterers. And God is speaking of adultery in the same sentence with divorce. The Christian should be guided. The Christian should be wary. The Christian should remember that marriage is sacred and it is binding. So when you want to marry, you must approach it with a reverence. A reverence. Because once you decide that, I will walk away, the Bible is clear. You are to remain unmarried until that person dies. And you know the way that thing is? When the person leaves you, if you like, begin to fast that the person will die. The person will be flourishing. You'll be seeing the person's picture on Facebook. Big, big chicks. Vacation in UK. The more you, you'll be losing weight with your fasting. The person will be growing robust. The person will refuse to die. Even if he's in a place where everybody dies, he will come out with charcoal on his face. <laughs> alive. <laughs> your hatred will be keeping him alive. He will be blossoming. So, meet according to God's law. Live according to God's law. If somebody accidentally, even though I don't agree with that thing, 
Somebody gets pregnant for you because you foolishly went to have sex outside marriage. You are not under pressure to compulsorily marry that person. That is what we called yesterday. What do you call it yesterday? Accidental what? Commitment. You don't live by accidental commitment. The Christian must live by conviction that the Lord has brought the woman to you or the Lord has shown you that this is the man and then you begin your journey. Okay, so man of God, I'm in a situation now where my marriage is hell. What do I do? It depends on what hell means. Is hell physical abuse? Is the person violent? What can I do? You are allowed to protect yourself and your children and go to a safe place. It is safety first. It is people that are alive that can still pray for marital bliss. You are not divorced. You are not, you have not gone to say, I'm not doing my marriage again. You've gone to a place of safety until that person comes to their senses. Because I've heard strange things. There's a matter I had to handle once. The wife woke up and saw her husband sitting across her chest like this with knife on her neck. She had to blink like three times whether she was dreaming. It was real. The man was sitting across her and he had a knife on her neck. Once those kind of things begin to happen, your life is at risk. Go to a safe place and be praying for the restoration of your marriage. Paul said the Lord has called us to what? Peace. Go and be praying from a safe place. You will not, you don't have the right, it is the Bible, to get up and say, because he's beating you, you want to go and remarry. You are an adulteress. Per scripture, it's not me, it's the Bible. And these things, as hard as they are, as hard as it is, it is the word of God. So me, I used to wonder, when somebody comes to tell you that they want to marry, and you're asking questions like, is the sister born again? And you're saying, well, um, um, not, not really though, but, um, hmm, le bruzo. Those your, those your phone. Hmm. You will use phone to pray. You will pray long. Because you, you, you don't know what it means to have marital bliss. Is a gift from heaven. Marital bliss. Hey. You don't want to marry somebody and that marriage is not working. It's torture. It's torture. Marital bliss is priceless. Priceless. You cannot put the value of it to gold. It's priceless. That as a man, you can come home to honor, come home to respect, come home to value. That as a wife, your husband can treat you like a queen, like a princess. That you people can argue, but can still look into each other's eyes and still be in love is priceless. Priceless. That peace that is in a family. You do everything to guard it. Oh, when we got married, we didn't know these things. Me, I had no father to teach me. I learned on the job. I had to learn on the job. Until I had to give myself wisdom. It's better to be smiling with your wife and lose an argument than to win an argument and she's unhappy. Oh, God. You will learn the hard way. You will learn. Don't play because you will learn. You will learn the hard way. Hard way. That you will know that that smile on her face. 
when she smiles at you like this, it's priceless. You can't buy it with money. So you will lose an argument, and even if it is paining you, you will be losing and be smiling. <laughs> and your heart is bleeding. It's just so that, that fragile piece, nothing happens to it. Especially if you are married to a spiritual woman. Don't believe me, oh. just go and believe your scriptures. The Bible says that God said, the reason I am not answering your prayers, you are wetting the altar with tears. He said, I have something against you because of the way you are treating the wife of your covenant. That's the Bible. Not me, Bible. It's priceless. As you grow in marriage, you now find out that the things you people argue about, they, they, they begin to fizzle out. They are no longer important. Things that would normally lead to quarrel before you people laugh about it and call each other strange. See your big head, see your round nose. It becomes jokes. It's priceless. Don't marry an unbeliever. If, if, I, can, if I can nail it to your heart, even a lukewarm Christian is a risk. Lukewarm believer is a risk. No prayer life, no genuine love for God. If the person does not love God, they can't love you. They can't love you. Genuine love for God. Whatever it takes, make sure that that area is settled. You know that this one is a believer. You know. That if he wants to drive you, he will remember that he needs to go and kneel before God and God will ask him, Kesena, where is your wife? You know when Cain killed Abel? He came back to his prayer altar. Normally, as if everything was normal. And God said, ah, where's your brother? It's the same thing. You marry a believer, if he speaks to you anyhow, eh? and he lies down and says, Rubre Zuva, Holy Ghost will come and touch his head like, are you normal? Where is your wife? He will get up from there and go and set quickly because he loves God. He loves God. There's no time. So if I'm going through a challenge, what do I do? Two options. If it's physical, you need to be able to go to a safe place, physical abuse. If it's emotional abuse and all of that, then you need to speak to someone that both of you respect and trust. I've taught sisters here before, don't marry a man that is accountable to nobody. That there's no man in this world that he honors and respects that can tell him, sit down. And he will sit down. Don't marry such a man. It's a disaster waiting to happen. Don't marry such a man. Part of the conversation you should have, apart from the fact that where do you work, do you have, uh -uh, that those things are trivials. They are mundane things. The things you need to know is, does he know God? Is he born again? Who is his spiritual father? Who is he accountable to? Who can call him and say, Go and bring your wife now. And he will say, yes sir. Even if he's angry. You've heard me share this story before. I was driving a car in those days. That car was called a, a Honda Bullet. Oh. Melova. <laughs> a Honda Bullet. In the days of its prime, when I stepped on the gas in that car, it was a bullet indeed. Oh, I know why they are shouting now. <laughs> so, me and my wife, I can't remember where we were coming from. And then a heavy argument ensued in the car. Heavy. And in those days when I'm very angry, hmm, and I'm driving, you will know it in my speed. Even in town, I begin to cross 100. In town, poo, 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 poo. Hmm. 
I was just driving. And then I was talking. I was shouting. I was talking. I was shouting. I was talking. A preacher. As I was approaching Ekman roundabout. My wife just said one thing. I just stepped on the brake. Crah! If you see the dust. People jump away from the car. Then I stretched to the door. I flung the door open. I said, get out! My wife was shocked. How many years in marriage? Two years? There about. Get out! My wife was shocked. And she stepped out of the car. I pulled the door, jammed the door, and I put my... <laughs> I would have been James Bond, oh, John. <laughs> As I was just turning the roundabout, I do not lie to you. God said to me clearly, if you don't want to die, go and pick my daughter from that place. I heard him clearly. If you don't want to die, go and pick her from that place. So as I turned the roundabout, I came back sheepishly. Now the speed was normal. I never forget the picture. My wife was standing there. Tears were falling from her eyes. In public. It's a picture that I live with forever. She, you know that there are things you do, you can't, you can't take it back. Even if you say, I'm sorry. It's there that it happened. It's there. That's why it's important. Marry a man that God can say, go and bring my daughter back. A man that loves God enough to obey him. Bow your heads.